You are given 300 million to make a movie but it has to bomb at the box office or else you die. What do you make? Someone sitting in a room. Hand counting the 300 million dollars dollar bills. But every now and then he loses count and has to start over. Black Panther remake with an all-white cast. Live-action Yu-Gi-Oh! movie with real-time card matches, no CGI and official rule with current ban list. Take $295 million as the exec producer and make the movie with amateurs in filmed on a cell phone. Something with a 10-plus hour runtime. An enormously complicated storyline. No particular actors of note and a trailer that's full of long dead jokes. Moving the Dot, the story of the Dewey Decimal System. A live-action adaption of another manga, anime, cartoon. I remember a Twitter post saying, recreate the Twilight movies. But instead of Robert Pattinson as Edward, it's Kanye West. Except he doesn't know he's an actor in the movie. So I'd probably do that. Coming this summer, it's the sequel nobody asked for. And nobody wanted. Super Mario Bros. 2. Same cast. Same plot. And hash X200B. Live action Kalu. A buddy road trip movie that takes place in the Rwandan genocide. And then they go back in time for some reason. Guy buys $300 million worth of stuff, the motion picture. The Last Airbender 2, with the same cast and everything. Except the Tyro is completely cut from the story and Appa has been replaced with a regular donkey. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a struggling elderly man whose life dream is to be a party clown. He eventually becomes a clown and everyone is terrified of him. No idea yet, but it will take at least 50 years to make it. I get the money up front, right? Another Robin Hood movie no one asked for. Paul Blart time traveling through history on a Segway solving all the world's past wrongs. Paul Blart stops WW1, WW2, 9-11, Columbine, his original movies ECT. Kevin Spacey playing a guy accused of sexual assault but is innocent. I'd have Harvey Weinstein producing it and playing a cameo of himself. Holmes and Watson 2 Monopoly the movie starring Kevin Hart and The Rock as billionaire brothers that are trying to destroy each other's real estate empires not realizing the true real estate empire is that of the Heart. I've always wanted to make a monster movie about numbers. It's called Countdown to Apocalypse and I already made 3D models of the monsters. HTTP www.snakevsmongoose.info slash blog slash p equals 213. The plot is that the army's arithmetic division opens a portal to the dimension of value. They find out that the shapes of our number symbols were actually based off of gods. These number monsters escape into our world and cause havoc. Eventually, one number, Falk, which is between 6 and 7 inches gets destroyed by the military. The number is erased from reality, changing all math equations and thus closing the portal. Now our heroic scientist team must find a way to send the monsters home without destroying them. In addition, we find out that the act of counting powers up to these creatures every time their number is said out loud. This causes them to multiply and divide. 
Normally the boost is minor. But there's just one problem. It's New Year's Eve and the countdown is about to begin. Rated R. Sense and sensibility in space. Sci-fi fans will hate the period drama and period drama fans will hate the sci-fi. Remake Rambo as a musical, with Stallone doing his own singing. Hire Verbolta direct. Then just leave him to it and go about your day knowing that you will die of old age. An urban reimagining of A Clockwork Orange starring Jaden Smith as Alex DeLarge. Funnily enough, a friend and I once sneaked into a fancy downtown Philadelphia party that happened to be a bunch of movie and music and television people. We were dressed okay for us but we stuck out as disgusting among such fancy and rich people. When people asked us what we did in the business we'd say screenwriters and my friend gave the answer above. It earned a lot of strange yet thoughtful looks so if this abomination gets made in a few years. Sorry. A remake of Mrs. Doubtfire staring Kevin Spacey. The trick is, hire legit good writers and good actors and film a great movie for $290 million. Then make a terrible recut of the film using bad takes. Stand-ins for the famous actors. Leaving out important plot points. Using test versions of the CGI footage. Crappy stock music on synthesizers. Etc. Put this version in the theaters under a dumb name without doing any advertising and watch it bomb. Then a year later you can spend the remaining $10 million to put the good version of the film with the right title in theaters. Make back your $300 million and more in revenue so this whole exercise hasn't been a dumb waste of time. Three hours of Java programming with an anxious stone guy. That's the title, and hash x200b. It's got to be a movie that's emotionally and physically impossible to watch. A guy has a shit life and is a ripe cunt to the only people in his life who are nice to him like his sweet old grandmother with terminal cancer who makes him soup every day. The nice checkout girl, who's making small talk with him and seeing if he's okay etc. A cute dog that follows him to and from work. He wins the lottery 10 minutes into the movie and spends the next 80 fucking with these poor souls. In horrifying and expensive ways. Blow the budget on elaborate sets and props. Like convincing the grandma she has dementia with elaborate scenarios using paid actors and chaining the dog up almost within reach of some tasty food. The audio will go between needlessly quiet to ear-splittingly loud and back again constantly. To induce nausea, a mild green filter will be on the entire film. It'll also be constantly warping almost imperceptibly. Harry Potter and the influence of climatic legacies on the distribution of dryland biocrust. Communities. 2020. You have to make it extremely generic and not appealing. Anything too ridiculous will garner people watching it just to dick around. So I'd call it, The Man With A Plan, it's a generic action movie. Star a bunch of no-name actors. They have to stop a Russian mob boss from bombing the home of the main character. The main character has one character trait. Being a dad. A Western with Katherine Hagel. A big budget epic adaptation of Finnegan's Wake. Springtime for Hitler. An adaption of To Kill Mockingbird that is about a spy named Mockingbird. Played by Leslie Jones. And all the people trying to kill her. She'd have a CGI sidekick who is an anthropomorphic bird named Finch, voiced by Amy Schumer. And it wouldn't be a comedy. 
Asterisk thank you for the gold. I'd make a movie so close to being a porno that it gets banned from regular theaters. Two and a half hours of the loudest. Most piercing screams over experimental noise music with a black screen that flashes the words Fuck you, every 20 seconds. I could make that for free. Keep the 300 mil as pure profit. Steven Seagal stars in, Bat Martial Artist in Russia. Any movie, but only spend $4,000 of the $300 million on it. Opening parenthesis. Always a risk making a deliberately bad film. Still, I think it would be a good idea to commission a comedy. Based on whatever was cool last year. I'm thinking emoji movie type idea. Maybe I'll commission Flappy Bird. Do a couple of red throughs. Any joke that gets a laugh. I'll personally rewrite to make funnier. Sack the director halfway through. After completion. Demand arbitrary scenes are cut. I would make the absolute best movie about the life of Martin Luther King Jr. that could ever be made. I make it to where you feel as if you stand next to him as he marches across the Selma Bridge. It would be a move that would make even the most entrenched racist rethink their life. Then I would digitally lighten the skin of the person who played MLK to where they are just enough black to still be considered black and anonymously leak that information on Reddit. A Jar Jar Backstory, The Musical What Women Want Part 2, Starting Bill Cosby A remake of the Harry Potter series but everything J.K. Rowling has retconned on Twitter, Pottermore is not only in the movie, but made incredibly obvious. I make an animated movie with my friends and call it Doggy Style. We voice all the characters and make it more raunchy and less politically correct than Sausage Party. The main storyline is about an old male dog with a small dong who can find work. He finds a niche porn fetish for small peepees and goes for an audition. He makes it so big in the industry that he moves on to banging, normal, poor stars. Adriana Barkhitch, Petter Jensen, Dillian Barker, Christy Snack, Janice Wurfith, etc. You get the idea. I then pay 100 million from that budget to foreign agents to call in threats to anyone seeing the movie opening weekend. No one goes to see it. I live, and it probably becomes a cult classic after its DVD, Blu-ray release due to all the controversy. A Harry Potter remake where Harry is a black woman called Hannah and Ron is a buff lady called Ruby. And Hermione is a boy called Henry. Everything else is the same other than Voldemort is a drag queen still played by Ralph Fiennes. time-traveling zombies that travel back in time to eat themselves, therefore stopping the outbreak before it starts but alas, them traveling back to stop the outbreak is what caused it. Written by M. Night Shyamalan Theresa May, The Musical At The Movie A musical about Hitler after dying in a car accident, a man has half his brain transplanted into his wife's head so that part of him will always be alive. Things go sour when she starts taking on a split personality and secrets took to the grave aren't secrets anymore, starring Clive Warren. Freddy Got Fingered 2, Going Deeper an epic musical, but all the actors are terrible singers and we do nothing to try and make their voices sound better. It'll be like people trying to sit through a terrible grade school musical production except these 
Actors aren't their kids. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe for more content.